welcome to the Awaken, Heal, and Thrive podcast. This episode is called More About Dark Entities and Wounded Parts. I'm Benjamin Bernstein, and this episode is co-sponsored by my book and audiobook, the number one Amazon bestseller called Instant Divine Assistance, your complete guide to fast and easy spiritual awakening, healing, and more. Just go to Amazon and search for Instant Divine Assistance or click the link in the show notes. I publish both audio and video versions of Awaken, Heal, and Thrive, so take your pick. The video versions are on my YouTube channel called Benjamin Bernstein Podcasts. I drop new episodes twice a month. Be sure to subscribe to Awaken, Heal, and Thrive wherever you get it. And if you haven't already, be sure to click that link in the show notes for a free chance to win a full year of my Awakening Plus online membership. I announce a new winner every month. So how can you tell whether you're being challenged by a dark entity or if the challenge is coming from one of your own wounded parts? I initially covered this topic in episode four, which I recorded way back in October 2022. Then, a year and a half later, one of my Awakening Plus members brought up this subject during one of our events called Ask Us Anything. Our conversation was so interesting that I based this episode on it, with my members' permission, of course. I do say some similar things in both episodes, but there are also plenty of fresh insights here. Join us to learn how to distinguish between dark entities and wounded parts and deal with them effectively. Do you have a question? So I was listening to your shamanic, um, one of your uh, replays, Mm -hmm. where asking these entities to leave. Okay. And I could actually feel, you know, a lightning, you know, Cool. Feel my body lightening. Okay. So are you asking if that was really happening or what's your Yeah, problem? yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I feel it happening and, and I routinely get people reporting it. Do you want me to riff a bit on entities or is there as yeah, a Yeah, I yeah, along that line I have one more question. So okay, go ahead. last time I was on your call, I was telling you I do a similar parts work. Okay. I do a parts That's work. right. I remember. I remember. Okay, so I was guiding a friend. He had, you know, he had several things going on, panic uh, attacks, anxiety, and uh, suicidal thoughts. So I said, okay, um, I can help you out with that. And we were doing it. And he was having some really intense, um, we had some intense sessions. And I don't know what he thought I was doing. I was just doing parts work. Mm -hmm. So one day he has... um, you know, his eyes are popping out and he's going like that. And he's like, there's a dark figure in front of me. Mm-hmm. And he's really in panic and he's looking at that, you know, figure in front. So then I don't chase ghosts and stuff, but then I was calm. So, I was, you know, it was a video call. So <laughs> I'm not scared. Right. Yeah, I just said, okay. You know, if it doesn't belong there, you can ask it to leave. And then I was gently guiding it, you know, you know, ask it to leave. Uh, it doesn't belong there. And then we'll put a, you know, safe uh, auric bubble around you. And I, you know, I got him out of it. Okay, good. And he doesn't remember what happened anyway. So I was just wondering, is this a, another part or... You know, I guided his parts to safety. Um, mm-hmm. but is this another part or is this an entity? It's a little tricky to tell sometimes. In IFS, for example, Internal Family Systems Therapy, their official teachings are all about just the parts inside you. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get too freaky. But informally, they, you know, according to the guy who trained me, mm-hmm. who is is, you know, deep into the more inner core of it, he says they do acknowledge that ex- there exist things they, they call critters. And mm-hmm. critters are external entities that are outside your family parts. They're just, you know, external dark things that show up. So they sort of informally acknowledge, or maybe at deeper levels of teaching, they acknowledge them, but not in their main public teachings. Okay. And so if someone is having a, a creature show up, mm-hmm. um, at first the person may have difficulty determining, is this one of my internal parts or is this an external entity? So you can just ask it. Yeah, I, I yeah, I didn't ask it, but I was asking him if that was, you know, along the lines of, is this a part of you or mm-hmm. you don't, he wasn't, he didn't know who that was. So right. the trick is sometimes critters lie. 
So <laughs> yeah. they may, may they may say I'm one of your parts, and they may not be. No <laughs> rules about them having to tell you the truth. Okay? <laughs> so what you can do is you can start working with it as if it's a part, and mm. if you, the integration goes well and it gets unburdened, then it could be that it's it is a part and it works just fine. But I would think that if you were doing a full parts process with it, at some point it would tip its hand and you would see that it's really not a part and it's just pretending to be. Another thing you could do if you want to test it. See, what I do if if I'm approached by what appears to be an external entity is I blast it with white light. So I call them out as, okay, as this thing is showing up, I know that dark beings can take on the facade of beings of light and they often do. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to tell what it really is. And one way is by the feeling of it. If you can sense its vibration and it feels really uplifting and light and bright, and then it's undoubtedly a being of light. But if it feels a little off, no matter how it looks, or it feels kind of creepy or dicey, then it's a dark being. Okay. So um, what you can do if a part's in question is you can say, I'm going to blast you with white light. And you call upon the the highest divine power you have access to. And, and I, of course, being a delegator, say, okay, allies, please blast this thing with intense white light so we can see what it is. And I just watch while they blast it. And then I watch its reaction. If the being says, oh, thank you so much. I feel so much better. And it's clearly very comfortable and even expanding and growing from the light. Then, okay, being a light, we can work with this. Mm-hmm. But if it is all edgy or uncomfortable or it shirks away, then it's a dark being. And, okay. and if you if you're working with a part and you really need to know what it is, you can say, okay, uh, uh, this is an unusual part, but I need to determine for sure if you're really a part of me or if you're an external being. And to do this, I have to blast you with white light. And are you okay with that? And you know, explain what's about to happen. And you know, you can work it in that way if you need to do a little reality check as you work with it. Got it. Okay. You could also, and then just now occurring to me as I say this, I've never had this line of thought before, but you could just say to your allies, okay, allies, I don't know if this is a part of me or if it's an external intruder. If this is an external intruder of darkness, please banish it now and just ask the allies to basically kick it out. But if it's a part of me, then let it stay. And then you can just watch what the allies do with it. And that might be a clue as to its identity as well. So is this permanent? So... We are asking these entities to leave, but then new ones can come in and oh, yeah. attack. Okay. Yeah, and this is the this is the thing I wanted to tie it all together with. Um, mm-hmm. Theoretically, if you were a human who had healed every last bit of trauma, mm-hmm. and you were basically a perfected human, there would be no entity that could ever gain access to you. They have no way in. Okay, so, so they like the negative emotions. Well, they they like something like that. But basically, if you as a human that uh, this is about all of us here, have some kind of unhealed wound or trauma or some weakness of some kind. That's how the entities exploit. They look for those weaknesses. They look for the traumas. They look for the openings. And that's how they get into you. Uh, they exploit it. And if they can catalyze you in a way that causes you to have negative thoughts or negative emotions, mm-hmm. that's their food. And they will do whatever they can to catalyze that and get that energy from you. Then they've got the free lunch. Okay. And so the big scheme I often talk about in relation to all this is I believe what the law of one teaching say about this, which is these visits from darker beings are actually doing us a great service because the way the universe works is these beings are always looking for, okay, who can we exploit? And they're always drawn to light workers because they just have more energy overall. And if they they can get a light worker stirred up and angry or sad or or (laughs) emotion, then they've got a lot of energy they can draw on compared to a regular person. Uh Plus, the dark side has a vested interest in stopping or neutralizing light workers. So they pay special attention. The brighter you are, the more radiant your Uh, energy is. It's okay. We got to take these guys down. If we had too many Uh, of these guys, we're going to lose the great battle for humanity. uh, Okay. Got it. (laughs) So so they they target those especially. Uh, And, And thus, if you are catalyzed by something happening, it doesn't matter if it's a discarnate entity or a human that the dark entity is working through. And if it's a human, it doesn't matter if this human is being used as a patsy and unconsciously is being used as the agent for the dark beings who are infesting it, or if the human has actually signed up for the dark side and is doing it deliberately. Those are all possibilities. It doesn't matter for our purposes because all we have to know is I'm getting a challenging catalyst Mm. and there is some kind of malevolent force behind this, it feels like. 
for years, I, you know, in my early shamanic practice years, I would try to chase away the entities and might succeed, but mm -hmm. later discovered, oh my God, the opening is still there. So that entity or something similar will come back and start feeding on it again. Okay. So ultimately the solution to a dark visitation is find out what it's feeding on and heal it. If it's a wound, oh, okay. do your shadow work and heal that thing up. Or if it's a weakness, then you need to empower yourself with more divine consciousness, more divine light, and get to that next awakening where that that weakness is now a strength. Okay. So I've even gone so far as to hold the belief that any challenge of human experiences is an invitation to healing and awakening. That's the reason okay. these things happen. A negative greeting is the law of one terminology for these things when you're challenged by a dark being. Then you you say, okay, another another negative greeting. I'm ready for another upgrade. A healing or awakening or both and you do your shadow work and you get it done and you do you, in fact you can do that and ignore the entity because mm -hmm. it's no pointless chasing them away they'll just come back or something simple come back if you uh, have okay. healing, right? mm -hmm. so you put your attention on the inner healing and mm -hmm. thank the beings for the thanks for showing me more where next level of work is so grateful to you now i can do this and get past you and then i'll get to my next level and then at the proper time the next challenger will find you and and challenge you at your level so basically, I no longer worry about chasing the entities away. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I sometimes use the analogy of a, if you live in a house and you keep putting a bowl of cat food out on the back porch every day, then if a particular cat's coming to feed on it, you can chase that cat away. And even if that, you know, it might run away right now, but it'll probably come back later if the food's still out there or other cats will come. So unless you've taken care of what the things are feeding on, then they're going to keep coming back. The larger scheme is, the game is set up so that on earth we have beings of light, beings of dark, and we need those dark challengers to initiate us to our next level. So because of the discomfort and challenge they cause us, that causes us to get into a higher gear and awaken and heal more quickly and thus develop greater service capacity while we're at it. So it's really a lovely system. In fact, I believe in the law of one, there was even a story about how there was a version of earth that had only beings of love and light. It was, mm -hmm. you know, the level this is at now. And and we didn't even have a veil of forgetting. We knew about the higher levels mm -hmm. and couldn't be bothered to move on. Earth was such a paradise. Mm -mm -mm. Right here, why would I move on? <laughs> Great time here in 3D, you know? And, you know, eventually they all got through, but, uh, you know, the universe said, okay, we that time we got a bit of a log jam on Earth, not what we had in mind. There's, we need to move in through. So next time we'll make some challengers on Earth and and give these light workers a little bit more of a catalyst to to stay in motion here. We don't need to be Earth, Earth to be quite such a paradise. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> so I hope you can now more easily tell the difference between dark entities and wounded parts and deal with them more effectively and efficiently. Again, this episode was based on part of an event called Ask Us Anything in my Awakening Plus online membership, where you can awaken, heal, and thrive easily, quickly, and affordably. Here's a quick quote from one of our members. They said, quote, I am able to do the impossible since I joined Awakening Plus. I do my invocations the second I open my eyes. They give me the strength to make it through my often very challenging days with a smile and a big sense of gratefulness, end quote. Click the link in the show notes to learn more about Awakening Plus or visit awakeningplus.com. That's awakeningplus.com. Also, here are two five-star international reviews of my number one best-selling book. Tede, a reader in Spain, said, quote, powerful insights to easily enter higher states of consciousness. If you cannot meditate, this method will help you meditate for as long as you wish at a very high level. Once you are in the divine zone, healing is easy, end quote. Then Trish from Australia said, quote, it's easy to read and gets to the point simply without fluff. The invocations are explained succinctly and can be effortlessly incorporated into your daily routine. I love the invocations. They work on anything. I recommend this book. You won't be disappointed. End quote. As I mentioned earlier, my book's 15-word title is Instant Divine Assistance, Your Complete Guide to Fast and Easy Spiritual Awakening, Healing, and More. If you like to listen, my audiobook is free if you are not yet an Audible member. Instant Divine Assistance is also available as an ebook, paperback, and hardcover. Click a link in the show notes to check it out on Audible or Amazon or read it in Kindle Unlimited. Thanks for being here. Once again, I'm Benjamin Bernstein, and we are wrapping up. 
please leave me a five-star rating, review, or comment wherever you're getting this episode so others can also awaken, heal, and thrive. And be sure to click the link in the show notes for a chance to win one free year of my Awakening Plus online membership. Thanks again for spending this time with me. I wish you infinite blessings.